Hogwarts no more! That's right, cheers. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and ready for a different kind of video today. From doing a reread of The Deathly Hallows and realising there was still so much left to be said about certain characters, I've decided to do an analysis on a few individuals that not only stood out to me, but to all of you as well. So I thought I'd start with someone who has divided so many fans' opinions for so many years, and that's James Potter. Is James a heroic father who sacrificed for his family really highlights the man he was, or was he just an arrogant bully who loved to terrorise those he disliked, aka Severus Snape? Or was there two sides to James Potter? Did his upbringing have any effect on his attitude? I'm going to address all of those questions and more in today's video, so if this is the topic for you, then please make yourself comfy and join me as I do a complete analysis of James Potter. So who was the real James Potter? I think it's safe to say we've all seen glimpses of the man at his best and also at his worst. It's been argued back and forth between so many Potter fans that James was a bully, that he was arrogant, that he only cared about his popularity, yet we then see him go out of his way completely for those he cared about. So it's quite understandable for people to question what James Potter was the real James Potter. So let's take a look at him in his earlier years. We'll look at his upbringing and his background. So James was born to Fleamont and Euphemia Potter in 1960. This was a time when the Potters would have been past 50 years old at least, so it's what many would consider quite old to have their first child at. Even taken into consideration that wizards have longer lifespans, it's still past the age that many would consider being first time parents. Still, they adored their son, they doted on him, spoiled him, gave him whatever he wanted and James, in all honesty, had quite a privileged upbringing. He was not short of money as his parents were wealthy beyond imagination due to the revenue of the sale of Sleek Easy, the family business. So let's sum that up. He was spoiled, doted on, had the best of everything was also pure blood, so no questionable doubt on his worth to society, and was also a very confident young man. It would be hard for him not to be. James basically had the perfect start to life, so it's no doubt his confidence quickly turned to arrogance. Now don't get me wrong, he never flashed his wealth in others' faces, but it did make him believe he was special. Fleamont and Euphemia weren't unkind or bigots either, so it wasn't as if they were instilling certain ideologies in their son like other families were doing. The point I'm trying to make is that James Potter never had to struggle with anything growing up. When he entered Hogwarts, he makes friends with Sirius Black, Remus Lupin and Peter Pettigrew, a group who gained popularity quickly as pranksters but were still also recognised as decently skilled wizards. So James is there thinking, okay. I'm the leader of this group, I haven't a care in the world, I'll do what I want when I want to do it, and to be honest, at that age, in that position, who wouldn't feel like that? James was intelligent, he was skilled with a wand and also a broom, he was an incredible Quidditch player, he had it all going for him, but like most bullies, he had his target, and that was Severus Snape. He hated him with a passion, and it was clear as day that the feeling was definitely returned. What originally began as two young boys trying to outdo each other then turned into a massive heated rivalry with them both trying to hex and jinx each other at every possible opportunity. I want to address the flashback scene where James uses Levy Corpus on Snape in front of everyone and completely humiliates him. Harry was quite taken aback to see his father behave in such a manner and I honestly believe it's this moment that had a lot of fans turn on James and questioned how a good person can be so cruel. Now Remus Lupin does lift the situation slightly. He explains to Harry that Levy Corpus was used on a daily basis by dozens of students, that he could not walk through the Hogwarts halls without seeing someone dangling above their head. In addition to that, Snape had gotten James numerous times previously with hexes, 
so it's not entirely fair to single out this memory alone as a defining characteristic of the person James was. I do agree with that, but here's the thing. He singled out Severus when he was alone and outnumbered. He utterly and totally humiliated him in front of the entire school, especially having his trousers pulled down. This wasn't bullying, this was a vindictive motion on James's end, something which he took so far over the line there was no chance of going back. Rivalry had now turned into hate. He and Snape were complete polar opposites. The only thing they had in common was Lily Evans. There was no doubt that both of them would look for each other on the battlefield when they chose their sides during the war, and this time it would be dueling to kill. That was the side of James that Lily didn't like. Don't forget she had no interest in him until he showed signs of calming down. When he did, when he finally began to mature, we were introduced to the best of James Potter, and we are offered a somewhat explanation for his behaviour in the past. James loved Lily dearly. He was really starting to see the bigger picture, especially with the times they were living in now, now that this Dark Lord was gaining more and more followers. James had chosen his side. He was contributing to the protection of the wizarding community by risking his life almost every time he went outside the door. When it came to keeping his family safe, he also did everything possible and looked as if he had secured their safety until he was betrayed by one of his friends he so deeply cared for. That's another example that brings out James's true character. Even during his schooling days, he cared so much about the well-being of his friends. He convinced his parents to allow Sirius Black to be able to come and live with them. He sheltered Peter Pettigrew to help his confidence grow, and as for Remus Lupin, not only did he and the others learn to become anime guy, one of the most difficult things wizards can learn in order to accompany Remus during his werewolf transformations, but he also gave him an allowance from his own money so that Remus could get by as anti-werewolf legislations were heavily in place. This for me shows that James Potter cared for those who meant something to him. But during his Hogwarts days, nobody else's feelings were taken into consideration. He never thought about the consequences of his actions. His main concern was only for his friends, and he truly was an incredible friend, there's no denying that. James seemed to have the courage to do what was right as he matured. He gave his life for his wife and child, and he died a true hero. I fully believe that there was two James Potters, but they always shared the same character and the same core. It was a case of seeing the bigger picture and understanding that life does not always stay in the same place. It will move on with or without you, and James knew that. A massive part of that realisation was falling in love with Lily. He knew how special she was, and so did Severus. However, while James did indeed have her love and affection, Severus Snape's own choices drove her away. In conclusion, I still feel that the debate on whether James Potter was a bully or a hero will long continue. In my opinion, he was both, but it's what he's truly remembered for that's most and more important. With that being said everyone, that is my analysis of James Potter's character. If there's anything that you'd like to add, then please do so in the comments section below. Also, please make sure to check out my video where I talk about my upcoming series, Riddle and Animated Story, which is all about the early life of Tom Riddle as he transitions from the orphanage into Hogwarts. Thank you again for watching, be safe in these difficult times, be kind, and also be happy. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. 
Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.